Hey everybody, welcome to our video on writing to sequential files with Microsoft Access VBA. In this video we show examples of using the write and the print statements. So let's head over to our form that we're going to use to illustrate this. So the top here is where we're going to fill in the folder we want to put our file into and then below that is a text box to hold the file name that we want to create. Below here I have two text boxes to hold the strings that we're going to want to write to our files. At the bottom I have two buttons, one for the write and one for the print, and we'll use both of those in the same file so we can see the different results side by side and make sure that it's plainly obvious for us. Let's take a look at our code window then. So here's the code for the form we just looked at. The folder picker button we had at the top right here, this is the click event for that, and all this does is calls a function which is not visible, it's in a public module over here. Here we go. Now this is a, 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 a common function here that I've used in plenty of other videos and I have a, another video that talks specifically about using the uh, Office file dialog so I'm not going to go into it in any detail at all. Just suffice to say we're passing it a string to tell it we want to use the folder picker which is here and we're going to pass back the folder that was chosen as a string from our from our function okay so and we're going to put the result of this get file folder call into the top text box on our form that's all we're going to do in behind this button click i'm going to choose this test rights folder click okay so they'll put our files our new files into this folder next we're going to fill in our file name and i'm going to say um, Right example, oops, dot txt. All right, back to our code now. So the bottom of our form, we have two buttons: the write button and the print button. Those are both going to call the same method, okay? Called write strings. We're going to pass a string to tell it what we want to do. We either want to write or we want to print. Let's take a look at that method just below. Here we go. There's fit the, pretty much the whole thing on the screen here. So here's write strings. Our only parameter is a string telling it either write or print, and we'll use that at the very end of the method. Here at the top, we're going to check and make sure that we have filled in a file name. If we haven't, we're going to give our, our users a message box telling them you need to fill in a file name. Same thing for if the folder is the folder uh, text box is empty. Below that, we're going to create a, a full file name by concatenating our folder and our new file name together into this string. Below that we need to get a file number. When we're using these methods we need to get a file number. So we're going to use the built-in VBA function called free file. Now free file can be called just like I'm doing it here with no parameters at all and it will give you a number between 1 and 255. Now if there are already 255 files in use by your system at the time you will get an IO exception when you do this. You can also call this by giving it either a 0 or a 1. If you give it a 0, it will choose the next free file number between 1 and 255 that's available. If you give it a 1, it will choose the next free file number between 256 and 511 that's available. Next, before we can write to a file, we need to open it. And So here is the syntax for our open statement open we give it the file name we want to open and we tell it how we want to open it or the mode if you will and then we give it the file number as well after the keyword as now uh, I'm using append here you can put you can use the word output here or append but realize if you use the word output every time you write to this file it will overwrite whatever was in that file it'll wipe it out and replace it with your new content if you use append it will add the new content to the end of the file. You can keep on going. I want to clarify this though, because I realize I'm not saying this quite as clearly as I should. This is when you open the file. So if you're to open a file a single time and then write to it, write to it, write to it, you'll be fine. You'll be adding more content to it as you go. It's just if you open this file, if you open an existing file for output, that's when you're going to overwrite your content. Okay. Both of these, output and append, will create a new file 
if the file didn't already exist. All right, so you're safe there. Yeah, I just I'm just been always been using append because it'll create the file for me if it doesn't exist. Next, we want to either write or print, and that's where we test the string we passed in. We passed in either write or print here. So the syntax of the write statement and the print statement is exactly the same, except for the keyword write versus print. If we use write as an example, you write and you give it the file number that we got from our fee file function, a comma, and then you give it a string. Okay, we're using the write and the print statements. These take a, a string, a string concatenation. Yes, you can you can you can feed it numbers and dates, and we're gonna do that in our next form. But they're gonna be formatted as strings, and you're gonna have to concatenate them together as if it's a string. All right. So uh, what I've got here is three statements in both cases. Again, they're exactly the same. Uh, I'm just making it clear for us. Write statement example for file number, and then showing the file number, and then we're gonna write the text from our first text box and the text from our second text box. And the print statement is exactly the same. We'll be doing one or the other with a button push um, at all. Also, both of these, write and print, give you a new line or a new record in your file every time you do a write statement. So if you, you can't fit your, your content on a single line or you want to, to break it, just make sure that you you make sure you follow the rules for string concatenation when you break from one line to another give a line a line continuation your uh, underscore and then go on to your to your, your next bit of, of content don't give another write statement unless you definitely want a new line in your file so let's head over I'm gonna click save real fast let's head over to our file let's say um, string one and Okay, right example. So let's click the right pound first and then the print pound second. Now let's pull up our folder. So here's our new file. It was just created. Now you guys don't know what time it is when I'm filming this, but suffice to say that's the time it is. <laughs> and here it is, it popped up on the screen. Here's the file we just created. So the first button we clicked was the right, okay? All right statement example for file number one, string one, string two, and then I clicked the print button. Now you can see the only difference in the result between the two is when you use the right, it's gonna give you quotes on either side of your content. Um, I definitely do not care for that. I, However, if you like it, go for it. Uh, the print statement does not give you these quotes. So if you're gonna be doing anything, any sort of processing with the file, you know, and, and in my opinion, I wouldn't care to have those quotes around everything. All right, let's close that file. And back over here to our form. I have a second form here. And let's close that guy. Sequentially writing to a, a fixed format file. And by fixed format file, I mean a file that is, the structure of the file is positional in nature. So think to importing a text file into a spreadsheet and it's not a del not a delimited file but it's a file where uh, column one always starts in position one in the file and uh, you're going to pull column two from starting at let's say position 10 in the file and then at position 20 in the file would be where column three starts that's what we're thinking of here uh, that's what we're trying to create here uh, examples of, of needing to do this might be if you need to transfer files from from one system to another, let's say, one application to another, and for whatever reason, the receiving system didn't want to use XML as input. Uh, I use this quite a bit in the mainframe world when I'm transferring files from an access database up to a mainframe, and we use COBOL for our, our mainframe applications, and COBOL likes fixed format files. It likes you to tell it, this field starts in position one, field two starts in position 10, field three starts in position uh, 30, et cetera, et cetera. So that is, is good for doing this. Um, let me go ahead. We've got pretty much the same stuff at the top here as we had on the other form. We're going to choose a folder to write our file to. And again, same text box. Let's call this fixed1.txt. So head over to our form. Close this file, this window. Open up this code window. Here we go. 
Again, here at the top is the same thing. That's the pick folder click, same as before. Um, the print button and the write button, same as before, calling this a, a, a method with the same name. However, it is going to look different. Now here, let's take a look at our form again. I've got four fields. ID field, last name, first name, and a DOB. First thing we're going to do is check to make sure that we have the file name and our folder filled in. After that, I want to check for validity of data. I want to make sure that my ID field, my name field, and first name field are filled in. And if not, we'll give a message box stating such. I'm going to check to make sure our DOB field has an actual date in it. We're going to use the isDate function. So if it's if not is date is true on this text box, we'll give a message box telling them that uh, the DOB must be a date. After that, we'll build again our file name. They're gonna we're gonna create by concatenating our folder with a slash and then our file name. And then again, we're gonna use the free file function to get the file number that we'll use in our write statements. Next, however, and this is where it gets optional for you. You get to decide how you're going to do this. If we're going to write to a fixed format file, meaning we want the same, we want data on different records to start in the same positions each time, we want to make sure that each variable that we use to write to the file has exactly the length we want it to have. Okay, so when I, in other words, if I'm going to write this ID field, it's always got to be, if we decide it's going to be 10, 10 bytes or 10 characters, it's always got to be 10. No matter what the number is we're putting in there, we're going to have a spaces, we're going to have 10 spaces before the last name starts. And if our last name is 25 characters, even if the real last name is only 3, we have to provide or we have to write all 25. So you write 3 bytes of the actual name followed by 22 spaces before the next name starts. And hopefully this will make a little more sense when we look at the file. Uh, but what I'm going to suggest, or what I'm going to do to help me with my sanity, if you will, is I'm going to use a user-defined type, or, or what we might call a structure in, in C. And we have to define those in code modules. They can't be defined in a, a form. Now, using the write and the print statements, we cannot write we cannot write the user-defined type directly. We have we can only write strings using string concatenation using the write and the print statements. However, like I said, this is just for my sanity. I can lay out the structure of my file using this using this user-defined type, even if I don't use the actual user-defined type itself to do the final write. But it allows me to build my file structure and see it visually a little bit better, I think, at least in my opinion. You do what you want. You can just write individual individual variables. Just make sure that if you're, if you're trying to write a fixed format file, that you control the length of each field. And that's what I've got here. Even though I'm going to, ID is probably going to be a real number, write and put want strings. So we're going to convert it to a string. And we're going to make this one a fixed length of seven bytes. Last name and first name are both strings of uh, 25 bytes each. And in DOB, I've made 10. Okay, so month month slash day day slash four character year alright that's ten characters again you don't have to have this user defined type you just have these four fields these four excuse me these four variables but again like I said I just I just like the idea of laying it out so that I can see it so after we've built or excuse me after we've gotten our file number we're gonna be using then we're gonna build our record or build our print line if you will we'll make an instance of our our fixed record user defined type in rec and then we're just going to pull the data from our form into each field in that user defined type last name first name and in DOB I want to format it because some people might type in a date of birth with a, a, a single digit month and a single digit day let's say and others might not I'm going to format it so it always looks the same using the format statement give it a string mm slash dd slash y y y Apologize to those of you in other countries that have different different date formats. Then we're going to use the same open statement we used before, and below that we're going to use the same case statement where we test whether we're writing or printing, and it's the same syntax again. Write our file number, comma, 
and then the string we want to write to that line. And this is where we say, unfortunately, we can't use the user-defined type. We can't pass it, pass that to a write or print statement. So we have to pay attention to the order of those variables in that record layout that we built in our user-defined type. Rec.id, followed by last name, by first name, and then followed by DOB. And something I forgot to mention in the previous form, after you're finished with a file, always make sure you close it. Okay, and I've got that in my exit code down here. Close, and you close it by making reference to the file number. All right, let's head back over to our form. Let's say uh, ID of one and last name of Johnson, first name of Don, and let's say uh, 5, 15, 1950. I have no idea if that's correct or not. Now I'm going to use the print statement. We've already seen the write statement, and um, I don't. Actually, we will use it in a minute. Let's do a print statement, though, here. And then let's say uh, 2 and Tubbs. I don't remember his first name. Jack. And let's go um, 53 and uh, 7 25 print. Let's take a look at the file we got from that. So here it is fixed. Open it up. As you can see, even though our ID is only one byte long, we defined them as seven, a, a seven byte string. So we have seven bytes here, okay, which means our last name always starts in the same position as we go down the file. So this is suitable for very easy importing into a spreadsheet, let's say, if you use the fixed format. It'll go into a mainframe just fine as well. Last name, first name. And then DOB, DOB, always starting in the same position. Now we can go ahead and just really quick, let's just use the write statement real fast and open that guy back up. See, if you use that write statement, just realize everything is going to be pushed over by one byte because you're always going to have that, that, uh, because you're always going to have this quote here on the left side. And that's going to mess up things if you tell people to expect the ID to start in position one when actually it starts in position two. Position one's going to have a string and it's going to be a quote. So I don't think I would be using the, um, the right statement in this type of uh, application. Okay, so that's it for the print and the write statements. They're very simple and easy to use. You can use them for log files. You can use them for transferring data to other systems. Look for some other videos from me shortly on the put statement as well as using the file system object to write. And then we'll turn around and do the same three videos on reading these files back in and using them in the opposite direction. So as usual, I'll have a link to my blog and the code listing that is there in the description down below. Thanks for watching. I hope you got something out of this video.